So the rich husband brings you to this room, says, paint my wife, and strokes the fatted purse. Francesco del Giocondo is a fool to squander jewels on your peasant throat and lead you ripe and lazy to my door, as if the brush of Leonardo wished no finer subject than his plump third bride. I hear that imp Saleh laughing still, I laughed myself until I saw your face, so strangely still, no doubts, no questionings, the broad soft face, the fleshy lids, the gaze accepting worship from a dullard spouse like Beatrice Deste to her lord. She's lost a child, he whispered will not talk, nor eat, nor sing, not eat. And I implore the great Da Vinci to evoke her smile, her woman's vanity, her queenly grace, her beauty that I hoard so selfishly. He left us, that was half an hour since, and you and I have not exchanged a word. Beauty in life may perish, not in art. Where is your beauty? Have you got a mind? Paint man and then the intention of his soul. Good, if the flesh is vibrant with the soul. But when I see the nerve that knits the brow, that curves the lips to smiling and to yawn, that bends the wrist, that opes the vacant eyes, the miracle of living, all a waste. How can I lie on canvas to the world? Cecilia Gallerani sat for me, holding an ermine in her slender arms, and in its claws and snout and furtive eyes, emblem of purity, her lover said, I left its narrow comment on her name. Nothing quite suits me like a paradox. This very morning, Juan Tovaglio came and begged a little picture for his dame. Oh, just a small Madonna, dear my lord. A Christ child in the temple, sweet and fair. We read Isabella, did I lie that day in Mantua when I put aside your satin shoulders and your famous wit and left the profile of ambition's self? Our hopes are cheated and time foils our plans. Death grins at cares, life struggles are in vain. We flatter Lodovicos for our bread, practical sforzas with their stubby hands that dare to censure where they cannot dream. We paint Madonna Lisa for a prize. We drain the marshes and divert canals. We squander genius on a fancy ball and hitch our knowledge to the Borges crime. These are the penalties of being Earth. Earth. Mona Lisa, common places, prose, you and I meeting at life's every turn. I drawing beauty from the forms of earth. You piling earth upon the beauteous form. How shall I paint you whom I would escape? Hear the bells pealing. Brunelleschi's dome and Giotto's campanile are full of joy. And every sound that penetrates this room is like a person with a voice and name, breathing and speaking and they touch your veil. Your face at twilight in the bluish dusk, pale shadows fleeing, 
and unearthly sound. Let there be music. Let the painter's world encompass Mona Lisa. Understand through tones of every instrument I love, through bells that filter through the troubled light, through songs and poems that I love to hear. Why I must paint her who have painted Christ. Never a painting started without fear. Proportion is the miracle of dust. Thus she proportioned whom I first despised may be a miracle, a thing divine, and men for centuries may pause and stare to see her triumph over death and time, to see behind her broken hills and mist the rugged country of our human years, repeated in the jagged line of sleeve. No ornaments, no jewels, only poise and hint of motion in the wondrous hands, and peace and power in the woman's glance that limps the mystery of life and art. I love you, Mona Lisa, as I love all earthly challenge. Every bird that flies, the twisted olive and the coiling stream, the undulating rhythm of a shell, the flow of laughter to the mother's breast, the ordered mounting of a leafy stem, the play of muscles and of light and shade. But dare I risk your anger, say aloud. I love you, Mona Lisa. There, she smiles.